Welcome back, everyone, to Stogie Geek Shorts. This is the La Aurora Blending Seminar. We're moving right through it. We're on Parito number three. That's right. This is the Nicaraguan um, component of the La Aurora Preferidos blend. We just finished off the Brazilian tobacco, which is very good. It was very good. It it didn't have as It wasn't... um, It coated the palate different... I find it wasn't as enjoyable as the Peruvian to smoke as Perito. I was surprised, yeah, and I would agree with you on that. Mm. Considering if you would have told me up front which one to smoke first, and I'd enjoy better, I'd say the the Bahia. Yeah, it. Um, I it, this would definitely be a component of a blend rather than a, a cigar on its own. That Peruvian one definitely. That saltiness kind of kept your your interest. Yeah, this one is it's good, and I get the flavors from. But I'm kind of like ready to move on to the next one. Yeah, you know yep. what I'm saying. Yeah, the next not one, bad, not bad cigar. Though, not at yeah. all. So Nicaraguan, medium to full bodied, aromatic, sweet flavor. Um, it gives it very personal characteristics that provide a rich and earthly flavor. That's what men also okay. sell. We'll see. We'll see what we think of this one. Great little size in these perritos too. Um, this is a lot of fun. Again, you can order this uh, blending seminar from the Havana Cigar Club. I'll even give out the phone number yet again because I just like saying the phone number, apparently. It's 401 287 4250. 50 bucks gets you this blending kit, gets you the DVD and the slides that we're referencing with all kinds of good information about tobacco in general, actually, uh, inside of the presentation. Manuel did a fantastic job. It's very much a learning experience. So Yeah, I mean, like I said, sit down one afternoon, you got some time, pop the DVD on, go through the slides, and, and then you can enjoy some, some smokes, and you really can go out at your own pace, and I think you'll get more out of it the less rush you are. That's why Paul and I waited till I was actually up in the studio to do this mm. in person. Yeah, the Nicaraguan is very It's interesting. It's interesting how different... These peritos are. Yep. As we go through them, as we get into this, I'll hopefully pick out some of the characteristics of it. But they are just so different. It's amazing that they can all work together, right? I mean, it's almost like when you're cooking and you're adding all those different components. Um, I tend to fail miserably at cooking if I start adding components that are, like, very different. Like, it gets gets to be a hot mess. But uh, in the same as for blending, you get someone that really knows what they're doing. They can take all these very distinct components that on their own are so different, but somehow together they can make them all work. Yeah, and that's where leaf placement becomes very, very important uh, with a cigar as well. So, I mean, it's one thing you could pick tobaccos out, but in terms of you know putting them into a blend and, and having leaf placement, we've, we've talked a lot about that. That's a real key, key thing to do and, and a talent. Absolutely. Um, you will learn in, in the blending seminar about the different primings. And I want to say he tells you with these peritos what the primings are of the plants they come from, from their respective countries. Um, I don't have that information here, so you just have to refer to the blending seminar. I think that's something he, Manuel just kind of had in his head. But from top to bottom, um, well, the very top, as we described before, is Corona, yep. which is those small leaves on the top. Then you have Lajero, Viso, Seiko, and Volato. From top to bottom, those are the different primings, and they'll prime, you know take the primings at different times, and then from there they go into the curing barns. From the curing barns, they get fermented, and then from fermentation, it goes to aging. Yep. Uh, and he takes you through that whole process about you know how they do that and gives some of the characteristics of the different primings. He says Lajero obviously is more strength, aroma, flavor, oils, and nicotine in the Lajero, as we've described on the show before. Viso has less strength and flavor than the Lajero, um, but more than the Seiko. Seiko tends to have a medium strength with some more sweetness. So he goes through those different um, aspects of the plant, the different primings, the characteristics that each one has, and it is very educational. Yep. Um, he says the Volado, which is the lowest priming, uh, is a, a thinner leaf and has a very high combustion rate. So a lot of times uh, manufacturers will use that leaf. And they also, when they're blending a cigar, they have to take into consideration how well it burns. Yep. So some tobacco will put in there to make sure that it burns evenly, make sure that it burns all at the same time. If you've ever had a cigar, that as you're smoking it, 
and you notice like a little hole pops up that Mouse starts hole. burning. Mouse hole. Yeah, beyond the burn line. Yep. That bet. means that one of the tobaccos inside is burning faster than all of the rest of them, yep. um, and, and that can be a flaw in construction. And I think lead to kind of a negative smoking experience. When I was talking to Jose Blanco, he said, you know, a cigar has to burn, draw, um, and smoke and combust very well. Regardless of what you're blending for a cigar, yep. it has to burn, draw, and be well-constructed. And if it doesn't, you're, you're not going to have a positive experience. And I noticed that when I'm reviewing cigars, if I find I get one that doesn't, because, you know, I have Paul syndrome, right. I'll hold back on the review and I'll try and, you know, get to another one and smoke it so I have a better smoking experience. It's not going to make the tobacco any better. Yep. But it's going to make your smoking experience better so that you're going to experience everything the blender intended. And these are handmade products, so uh, you do tend to get some construction problems every now and again. Yeah, you know, I've gone on a few of these factory trips where you get a chance to blend your own cigar. Basically, you can mm. pick out leaves um, at different primings and put, and put together a brand and they'll roll it for you. A lot of us who are the stogie geeks, we're all inclined to throw Lajero into the blend. Yep. And the answer is you really don't want to do that. Um, it, it sounds well, like you're going to make... it's tough to burn Lajero. Yeah, it's tough to burn Lajero. I mean, that's where that's why Volados and, and Visos are used for that combustion, um, you know, as well as flavor, but, you know, so... There are. I've seen some Ola Hero blends work, but they they're few and far. This one's got a little a little spice to it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, I would say this is a higher priming. If this was not Ola Hero, I'd be surprised. But even the combustion's a little off, not mm-hmm. terrible. Right. Um, well, probably it could be a La Hero. Which yeah, is, I'm looking yeah. at yours burn too. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little off. Yeah. Yeah, you can see. I mean, I don't know if this is going to be one that. I'm going to smoke like that Peruvian one. You know, Nicaraguan tobacco for me, I when I smoke it, I can tell that there's Nicaraguan tobacco in it. I can tell this is, of course, I knew going in that it was Nicaraguan, so I'm already kind of biased. But I have a tough time relating that to different flavors. Saying that Nicaraguan tobacco is this flavor or that flavor, like I just have a tough time in my own palate, r- relating that. Like, I would just call this Nicaraguan. Like, <laughs> But Peruvian, there is a characteristic that mm-hmm. I get out of Peruvian. Now, my feeling on that is it's probably, I don't know how many varietals of Peruvian tobacco are, are common. That's something I don't know the answer to. But I tend, but Peruvian is a very herbal, grassy component that I'll, I'll yeah. get most of the time. And you don't get any of that herbal grassy with Nicaraguan. No. Um, it doesn't have a salty component no. to it. It's, got it's, a peppery. Cla- pepper, it's almost spicy and peppery, yeah. which aren't really necessarily flavors, but more a characteristic of the experience that you're having on your palate. Yeah, and you definitely the flavors are weighing on your palate. You'll, these are going to be heavier flavors on the palate. Thus, we're getting into that medium to full now for sure. And, and if I would get any flavor, it would be a very slight hint of a coffee, chocolate. Co- it's in that. Yeah. If you look at the flavor coffee, wheel, which yeah. I encourage everyone to do, especially as you're going through this blending seminar, is to bring up a cigar flavor wheel, which puts it in all those different categories. This one definitely falls in the category that's got chocolate, mocha, and coffee in that in that, in that, yep. um, in that part of the flavor wheel is how I would characterize yep, I would agree. this Nicaraguan tobacco. That's not all Nicaraguan tobacco, but this particular one, I do get hints of that. Yeah, and I tend to, that's kind of an extension of those earthy notes is what I tend to get. That It's that richness mm. that you start to get. When the, when the earthy notes get richer, that's when you can kind of start to feel some of those other flavors on the palate. Right. A lot of smoke production off this thing, too. There is. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's yeah. definitely more smoke production than the other Peritos we were smoking. Yeah. This one again is pretty good as a cigar on its own. Not not bad. I mm. mean, again, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go as we go down it, but it's again surprisingly good. Excellent. All right. Well, Will and I are going to finish smoking our Nicaraguan Perito, which is cigar number three from left to right. Again, Peruvian is what we started with. That was the leftmost Perito. Uh, Brazilian was the second one in from the left. Now we're on the third one in from the left, which is, which is the Nicaraguan. Um, so we're going to finish smoking that, come back, and we're going to smoke the Dominican. Um, and then, I don't know, we, we could be smoking this blending kit for a long time. As I think I was commenting during the break that to smoke all of these burritos, then you smoke the full blend in that Cameroon. Then you also have all of the different wrappers in a Churchill. To smoke through this whole thing, now the blending seminar is one hour and 37 minutes. 
um, an hour and a half really gets you through the Peritos. I mean, especially if you smoke them all the way down um, and maybe through, you know, starting on the Cameroon. Yep. This Churchill probably takes at least another hour and a half yep. of smoking time. So this is like a three hour kind of deal to go through this. So make sure you set aside the time if you're going to. Now, you can certainly break them up. Um, which is how I would recommend that you smoke the Peritos mm-hmm. and then smoke the Cameroon. Yes. Um, and make sure you do that because you want to sample all of the components and then smoke the finished blend, especially with the Cameroon wrapper, which, which might be yep. one of my favorite wrappers for the uh, yep. Perfidus and, and, and then the Churchill will give you the, var- the varietals on that. Yeah, and smoke the Churchill maybe after you've got a clean palate. That's what I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, I, I think this is you've got to kind of break this up. So uh, with that, we're going to finish smoking our Nicaraguan Perito and come back, and then we'll report on the Dominican.